Hi guys, so we're back with day two. And let me just get in behind here so you can see. Um, as we were doing yesterday, we were drawing our diagonal lines on here um, with our marker. And I haven't finished doing this just yet, so um, let me get on to drawing this. I tried to explain it as briefly as best as I can for you guys to understand um, how to do Oopsies. these um, marks. So I showed you in here, once you draw this line on the next set of diamonds, you want to divide this one in half. And I'm going to do mine at one and a half inch plus an eighth because mine's a little bit wider than, um, than a three inch. And continue there. So let me just move my sewing machine out of the way. And we're going to continue drawing diagonals. Um, you're actually welcome to do whatever you want as in quilting. If you want to quilt this with stippling, you can quilt it with stippling. You can just sew all around um, the squares if you want. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. It is a little more time consuming this way, but it's well worth it. So what I'm doing is I'm dividing, going down my row of diamonds here on a diagonal like that. And then I'm measuring where this previous line I drew, because there's a big space here. I'm going to fill in that big space with another line in keeping with going that way. So all I have left is this one on this end and then I'm going to finish it off here. So it's uh, well really off here. Okay. And I think we have to do, whoops, I just drew on my sewing machine. I think we have to um, draw on. We have to do a little piece on the corner. I can't even see my line here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're good there. And we're good there. And that corner. So that one's done. So this whole side's done. So I'm just going to turn my fabric around here and finish the rest of the diamonds here. Get them kind of on the points like that. And then measure one and a half and one eighth. One half and one eighth. There. And now we're on to our last one on this side. So that's that. And we need to draw our line here for to split it in half. Hi Tia. And my little girl, my puppy. Here. And I need one here. So we've done our lines going all this way now. Oops. Now we're going to do it the opposite way. So we've got lines running this way 
Now we want them to run this way. So let's divide this in half, this group of squares. Divide this one in half. My board up here because I keep um, going off the edge. And then we want it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go finish doing all these lines off camera so my camera doesn't die again. And just. Oopsies. Boy, this is really hard to see. So now we have little little squares in here. So that will be our quilting. So I'm going to go finish this and then I'm going to come back and show you guys what to do next. And I just have to pause the video. Okay guys, so I have it all, um, all drawn out. I should probably turn some lights on here. And now, when you finish your top piece, we're going to have to um, pin our work. So I'm just going to take a bunch of pins and drop them here. And make sure your quilting, uh, your back is nice and straight and not puckered underneath. And then just start sticking some pins in it. And I stick a pin in every single square. And when I'm quilting it, I just removed the pins, but this will keep your work from shifting all over the place. So just go ahead and stick pins in wherever you like, wherever you see fit, all three layers. So it's your top layer, your batting, and it's going to be your backing or lining, whatever it is um, you're using. You could probably even use flannel. Flannel would turn out nice. So I'm just pinning it wherever, securing all my layers. When you do a big quilt, you ain't going to pin it with these pins unless you have pin mores. And those pin mores, which I got coming, I ordered some, I just don't have them yet. They go on the tips of these pins so they don't prick you. Um, you're going to find yourself getting a lot of pokes with your pins. Okay, so if you look at the back, this is where you want to make sure none of your material is puckered anywhere. Keep it nice and flat. When you start quilting, you don't want um, you don't want puckers in it. Okay, so this piece is done and ready to be sewn, and we're going to sew on these lines that we drew. But first, we need to do our sides. So I'm just going to sit this one aside for now, and we have to do the same thing um, with our sides. Okay. So, pretty sure we need to cut our, our sides too. So I'm just going to take both these pieces and trim them off. So I want them to be the same size as this. So I can put all my layers together without any problems. Okay, so I'm just going to use the shorter ruler. I'm going to go over the edge a tiny, tiny bit because I don't want um, I don't want to cut my fabric. So I'm just lining this up nicely. Wow! I don't even know why I bought this because I never use it. I keep forgetting about it. But this is. I want to show you my rotating mat so I don't have to keep moving my fabric. This thing is a handy dandy tool I'll tell you. Like that. And then I just rotate the mat and I got it off Amazon.ca. Okay, my garbage can go. It's 
right there. All right. So we have this done. Now we're going to lay out our, our lining. Then we're going to take a piece of our batting. We're going to line it up nice and square with all the corners. When we're done quilting, we'll probably have to trim this up because I had to trim the other one up a wee bit. And then we're going to sit this one on top like that. Okay, so it's perfect. Now, for this, we don't have to follow the front. We can just draw a diagonal. So we're just going to go from, well, if you had a piece of paper or a mat like this, sometimes it helps to find your diagonal. And mine would be right here. So I'm just going to lay that down. And I'm going to draw my blue line. And then I'm going to go an inch and a half on either side of it all the way down. So my line has been drawn. Go inch and a half. I love this ruler. It's clear and easy to see. Inch and a half. Done. So here, let's flip it and go an inch and a half. Inch and a half. And an inch and a half. Now we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to line, we want to make our diagonals this way, right? So we're going to hold this this way. Put my piece of fabric there. And this is going to give me my diagonals to work with on my fabric. There. And I move on over, inch and a half. And these will be our quilting squares. And it looks so pretty when it's quilted. It always does. Inch and a half. Okay. Turn it over, and then you're going to pin this the same way, only you're going to pin it on the wrong side, because this is the side we're going to sew on, and we really don't want to run over our pins on the other side. And it'll be hard to get at your pins um, when you start sewing this. Now when my sister was doing this the other day, she got a few she got a few um, puckers in it, but as you can see, this is perfect, perfect diamond shapes everywhere. Hopefully you can see that. See that? So that's all you're going to do, and you're going to do that to the second piece, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to sew it together, or how to, to pin it. Well, you, I'll show you now before I go off. So this one here, you just have to stick pins in all four corners. That's to keep your fabric from shifting. I'm by no means a professional quilter or a professional quilt maker. I just enjoy making them. I'm self-taught and I've watched a lot of videos myself. I've learned a lot of things and I just want to share some of my ideas or some things that I had seen. So that's it. That's all you need to do is put that many pins in it, keeping it um, secured. Okay, so I have one in every corner and all along the edge. And then when this side's all done, it'll be really beautifully quilted like those. Okay, I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish this one and then I'm going to come back. And then I'm going to pause the video right now. <laughs> I'm all by myself, so... Okay guys, I have completed what I wanted to do. So now I'm just gonna bring this a little closer so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here as opposed to um, me being really super close here. 
Now, if you notice, we have um, just an ordinary foot. Let me bring this camera up closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, second. All right, there we go. Now, on this here P sewing machine, we just have a regular sewing foot. So I need to take this off and put on what you would call a walking foot. And the reason we use these walking feet is because they have um, feed dogs and they feed the fabric. Whoops, they feed the fabric. See, these are feed dogs here. They feed the fabric through evenly as you're sewing. So this is called a walking foot. And when you're sewing um, several layers of fabric, you should should get invest yourself if you're gonna make quilts um, in one of these walking feet for your machine. This one is for mine, it's a Kenmore. And it's super easy to put on. But I find your, your fabric feeds through, because you got the feed dogs at the top and you have your feed dogs at the bottom. So it's going to feed through really evenly. And I just give that a little tighten with my screwdriver. All right, now, I'm probably going to run out of thread during the time that I'm quilting. So this is up to you now to, to do whatever color um, you want um, for your thread. I'm just going to use plain old white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this underneath my foot like this and I'm going to go start in the middle of my quilt. And the reason we start in the middle is if there is any kind of um, bubbles or anything in here that underneath you can kind of push it out with your hands and I really hope you can see this okay probably you cannot see what I'm doing but I am going to get poked with pins it happens every time so I'm just going to start quilting right here on this edge so I'm actually it looks like I'm far from the middle but I'm going to be sewing right through the middle of my fabric and you'll see how I do this. It's really, um, it's really complicated sometimes when you're doing a really big, huge quilt and you're trying to quilt it under your machine. You have, I only have this small area to work in, so it's kind of bulked up um, in this area right here. See that area? Not very much room. So let's go and start quilting. I'm just doing a regular stitch. I'm not touching my machine. Uh, my stitch length is 3.5 and the stitch is 2.2. So here we go. So I am kind of pulling the fabric with my hands, separating it and just guiding it easy and following my blue lines that I drew and taking my pins out as I go. I do not want to run over these pins. So I'm making sure I don't get any puckers or buckles underneath my fabric. So that's why I'm holding it tight. And it's starting to fold up in there, which is fine. Just following my line and pulling out my pants. So hopefully if there was any buckles there, we just pushed them all the way out by starting in the center. Now, I'm not going to cut my fabric. I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to sew down the next line right here. But I am going to give my thread some slack here because I don't want it to break while I'm sewing. And then I'm just going to continue on without cutting my thread. And you won't have to because we will have to trim this off. Can't wait till you guys 
See how straight my lines are not. <laughs> Believe me, they're not. I'm trying to do this without getting poked with these pins. God, I hate pin pokes. Okay, so lift your needle. Give your thread some slack. You don't have to cut it all off. Ouch. There, I just got poked. And now I just turned this fabric around. I've done these two rows already here. And we're going to sew this one. And I'm just going to continue this all the way down. And then you're going to find that you're going to be doing all of one side. And you're going to have to take your, your, um, your, cut your thread and go to the other end. Sure, there's no puckers. And for people that are brand new and sewing, if you're really unsure of how you can control your um, your fabric while you're sewing, you might want to not go so fast like I'm doing. I'm just going fast because I'm trying to show you guys what this is going to look like on the other side. And you can see. My, my three quilting lines I've done. Can you see that? And it is going to take a wee bit of, t of your time and it's going to take some couple of bobbins. I know I'm going to probably end up using another bobbin by the time I get these two sewn. Um, yeah, I'll be running out of thread. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to finish doing all my lines this way and then I'm going to come back and uh, show you what it's going to look like when I start quilting it the other way. So I'll be back in a jiffy. As long as it takes to pause and unpause. <laughs> okay guys, I've done my um, quilting. Okay, I've gotten one set of lines done. So what I discovered while I was doing this was instead of bulking this up, I'm going to show you what I did instead of, um, I did cut my thread. Okay, so I'm going to show you this. I am going to start in the middle again. So I'm going to go roughly, this is the middle here. Now I'm still going to stretch my fabric with my hands. So now when we sew, our little squares will be complete and we don't want any puckers in there if we can avoid it at all. Um, that's what you should do. So again, I'm, I'm just letting my fabric feed through. I'm not pushing my fabric. I'm just stretching it out because now I'm going to be locking these in after I complete this row. I'm going to, well, I need to do one more row. And then we'll be sealing off either side of our squares. So I'm going to show you something a little easier than the way I've been doing it. I have lifted my thing and my needle and cut my thread off. So now I'm just going to slide this back down and put this back underneath and just move a row over. So I'm not having so much bulk of the material underneath my arm and it was, you know, causing me to give me a headache. So this way we're just working with, it's going to get smaller as we move down the lines here. So there's not so much bulked in here on you. I'm just going to show you. How I avoided getting buckles. So flipping this over, you can see now we have 
a complete row done right here. So we have a little box and you can see I don't have any puckers in there and I don't have any puckers on the front which is rather important you know because that's the part you're going to see the most so you don't want any puckers in there. So just cut it off and continue doing um, oops, totally missed a line here and I did that the other day too. I love my walking foot that you can do this you can do this with a regular foot but you might not want to um, go too fast you want to have control so just make sure you have a lot of pins in your quilt and if you don't want to use straight pins you can use safety pins and that's mostly what most um, women that base their quilts use safety pins they don't use straight pins but because this is such a small piece, I figured it wouldn't wouldn't matter to use because we're not really going to have this hovering over our lap very much. And we won't get a million pin pricks. So it's okay to leave your thread because we're going to end up trimming it all off. I'm just going to show you a little bit of what I've done so far and how stretching out your fabric keeps you from getting puckered. And when you're quilting with a big quilt, you, you want to use quilting gloves because it helps to move your fabric a lot easier. So that's what you're looking for and aiming for are your little quilt squares. It looks really pretty when it's all finished. Your, your Look at the top is is got no my top's got no puckers in it whatsoever yet anyway touch wood so I'm gonna go ahead and do this finish this and then I'm gonna quilt these little guys here and when I get done I'm gonna come back and show you how to sew all of this together first we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do your your binding um, so if you just have short little pieces like this that's okay too all right I'll be back.